other things that stood out in the second scrimmage or final scrimmage, I know we're all up in arms about quarterback, 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 but there are other positions, people, that did some stuff here in the second scrimmage, the final game like practice. First and foremost, defensively, we're going to go to the secondary. The entire secondary showed out at Brian Denny. Caleb Downs, I was told, real deal. This guy jumped several routes in the final game like practice. Jumped several routes, made a lot of plays, kind of Minka Fitzpatrick-esque. Kind of Minka Fitzpatrick-esque as King of Downs. Got a great relationship with Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Learning some things from him. Former Alabama All-American safety. That's on the coaching staff as a director of player development. But uh, Caleb Downs jumped several routes in the final scrimmage. Played really well against the wide receivers. And I, I just look at him as one of two starting safeties. Whether he's a free safety or strong safety, doesn't matter. I just look at Caleb Downs as one of two starting safeties. He's number one. Number two here, that stood out to me, we're going to look at the linebacker position, and we're going to go to Tresman Marshall, the transfer from Georgia. Tresman Marshall, big, big scrimmage for him. He had strip sack, fumble, big play. He and Deontay Lawson ran that second scrimmage. Dean Law had some big plays also. He was solid. But Tresman Marshall, back-to-back game-like practices. The first one, pick six off of Tyler Buckner. This one, strip sack, calls to fumble. Marshall can play. Guy's a dog. Coming over from Georgia, national championship pedigree, two-time defending national, two-time national champion, bringing that swagger, that, that, that confidence here to Alabama. Tresman Marshall. Playing good ball. On the defensive line, Tim Keenan III is making some noise here on the defensive line. Young man from Ramsey High School in Birmingham. He, like Jaheim Otis, had a body transformation. Coach Saban talked about him growing, maturing. Got a chance to be major contributor here on this defensive line. I was also told, people I had conversations with after the scrimmage, Tim Keenan can be a big factor here up front. And Alabama needs more guys on this defensive line that can be a factor. Once again, it doesn't have that alpha dog, that alpha male yet, that leading voice in the room. It can still compete and win without that. Can that alpha male grow? Throughout the season, it can. Wouldn't put it past it. But right now, doesn't have that personality in the room on the defensive line just yet. But Tim Keenan, very good scrimmage there over the weekend. So now we flip this to the offensive side of the ball. For the first guy we pick up, uh, J.M. Miller. That dude. Probably. Arguably. The most explosive back in the room, what I've been told. This guy running by people, running over people, running through people, contact balance, speed, vision, toughness. Guy's a playmaker. We saw him last year. 233 yards rushing, two touchdowns. What do you average? 6.7 yards per carry. A lot of us were like, why isn't he playing more? And yes, Jace McClellan, big time. Yes, Rodell Williams, excelling in pass protection in the short yardage game. Yes, um, Richard Young, incredibly athletic, incredibly talented. Behind the other guys because someone wrongly and trying to get the gist of what he's being asked to do. We did not see... Justice Haynes in this scrimmage, dealing with a quad contusion, according to Coach Saban. 
But Jam Miller, arguably right now, most explosive back on the roster. He can, he's a home run hitter. Keep your eyes on that young man. Moving forward, that's uh, that's uh, Jam Miller there. Continuing on here with this with the offensive line. The offensive line is interesting because um, the right side of the offensive line was still Tyler Booker, J.C. Latham, right guard, right tackle. Seth McLaughlin, still your center. The left side of the offensive line is Saban and Eric Wolfer continue to mix and match and get the most consistent, physically imposing five on the field. The left side, you had Darian Dalcourt, left guard, Elijah Pritchett, left tackle. And uh, that was the most steady group in the final scrimmage that was the that was the two that helped Alabama create you know chunk yardage plays now this will not be the this will not, this will not be the final set in stone offensive line it will not be I still feel like coach Saban still wants to put one more finishing kind of look together I know as you I know you as Bama fans no uh, offense there to Darian Dow court he's, he's got experience but I think Terrence Ferguson gives you more upside there as an offensive guard. Elijah Pritchett, good. But Caden Proctor, the freshman, gives you way more upside there as a left tackle. But from left to right, the group of Pritchett, Dalcourt, McLaughlin, Booker, Latham, uh, that group had you more steady. I was told up front on the offensive line, I don't think this will be the group ultimately that takes the field on uh, week one. We'll see. But Sabe is still continuing to mix and match guys there on the offensive front. A tight end, Amari Nyblak continues to put on an absolute show. He's a freak. Uh, that guy's a freak. 6'5", well, 6'4", 245 pounds, Catch, route running, speed, athleticism, jump ball ability. But, man, as a blocker, he's improved. Putting guys on the ground, I'm being told. Plays with an attitude, and he's a mismatch. Amari um, Nye Black, it, it's just time to unleash him. Time to unleash him at a tight end position. Now, I know, John, I didn't mention this for, for it to be on screen, but... The two wide receivers that I was told that were the most consistent in the second scrimmage, one shouldn't be a surprise to you, the other one may be. The one that shouldn't be a surprise, Malik Benson had a good final scrimmage. He's starting to play faster, more confident, understanding what he's doing, coming over from a Hutchinson Community College in Kansas. Benson's doing Benson things now. That shouldn't be a surprise. A surprise is the forgotten receiver at times in the 2022 class, a young man that trained with one Devontae Smith before getting on campus, Shaz Preston, had a good second scrimmage. Smooth, caught the ball well, ran routes clean, made plays, was consistent out there. So Shaz Preston, Malik Benson, the two that were the most consistent among the wide receiver room in the final scrimmage of fall camp. But those are just some guys that stood out from what I was able to gather. People I trust here in terms of the final scrimmage of preseason practice.